All right. Today, a quick vid of something that I thought I'd never really make. Uh, so yeah, this is my, uh, you know, old setup, and super guns work, and you know, you get the adapter boxes, and, you know, a decent monitor, and this works pretty well, but let's be honest, it's a fucking mess. <laughs> you know, there's wires everywhere, and it's, it works, but over time you just keep adding, you know, different encoders, different converter boxes, and, you know, every game needs something different, you tweak this, you tweak that, and after a while you look at the money you spent, you look at all the crap you have, and you're just like, fuck this, Let's just buy a cab. And that's exactly what I did. The lighting in here isn't the best, but... Proud to present my very first cab. An absolutely beautiful table. This is, as you can see, this is was definitely made back in the 80s. I mean, yeah, the lighting here isn't the best, but it's wood paneled. You know, nice pink control panel that's still in great shape. The legs have got a few little rust stains on them, but other than that, it's still in great shape. Especially, you know, the top here. There isn't a single scratch on here. And it's just a beautiful little table. It's only 18 inch inches, so I mean, like, look, if I'm standing up, my kneecap is actually, you know, higher than the control panel. So, I need to get a proper stool. Currently, I just have this tiny little floor table with a pad on it. <laughs> but it was the best I could do since I just got this today. So, yeah, um, tables are something that, you know, right from the 80s that most people have kind of forgotten about. Uh, so, yeah. This is what the inside pretty much looks like. Again, I apologize for the lighting. But, you know, the boards basically just go in vertically with the gem harness. And the speaker's here, and... The control panel, if you unbolt it, is on a hinge and goes down. So you can easily get to the inside where all the wires are attached. Then over here is the coin shooter and the power supply, and of course the monitor. Now, I always wanted, you know, a big upright, but they just don't have any place to put them. And this thing will fit in my closet. And the nice thing about a small one like this is the monitor is... I mean, I wanted one that I could rotate easily. And like a 29-inch candy cap. I mean, if you get one like an Egret 2 that's got that rotation mech, it's pretty nice, but... Your average, like, Blast City or whatever, the monitor weighs a frickin' ton. And good luck rotating those ones by yourself, and you won't do it often. But this, all you do is, you know, just one, two, three, four, flip it, and then one, two, three, four back in, and it's done. You need to rotate the bezel, you do have to take the glass off, which kind of makes sense, because the art cards, remember, would actually go underneath the glass anyway, so if you're going to change the game, you'd have to take the glass off. But even still, it's just four screws to take it off. But you can rotate the bezel. So yeah, it's small, it's light. I can basically rotate the whole thing in all five minutes when I need to. And it really is just a nicely set up thing, this little cab, because it's got everything here. You know, and then you know, down here on the right is the coin box. But down here on the left, uh look at the keys. Uh, I hope this you can actually see this. Probably not, but it's the best I can do. See, the front panel opens up here, and what you got here is the monitor's, you know, chases. These little white knobs here control all of the monitor settings for the, you know, like, the positioning, the colors, uh, the vertical and horizontal holds. They're all here, so it's really easy just to adjust everything. You don't have to pull it out from the wall or whatever, just in this little panel. Let's see, from the side view, maybe you can see it better. Just open it up, and everything's there. And right here, this white plug in the back is for the uh, the resolution. It's a dual sync monitor for 15 kilohertz as well as uh, 24 kilohertz medium res. And to switch it, it's manual, so you, just, you unplug it here, and then you plug it into this one here for 24K. So, very, very easy to use, easy to access everything I need on here. 
that up. And what really sold me on this one is the monitor. It is spectacular. Like, you know, I'm in Japan, so there actually are real arcades still. And I've never seen a monitor this pretty in my entire life. It is just, man. Switch it on down here. Yeah, the power switch is actually down. Damn, this lighting. Yeah, here's the power switch right here. Flicker on. But there really is nothing like the real deal. And I mean, most cabs that I do have out locally are TriSyncs. And while TriSync is nice, TriSyncs just don't have the best low res. A true low res monitor like this, it's, it's just fantastic looking. You know, there's no burn, the colors just pop out. It just looks stunning. Like, way, way better than anything I've ever managed to get going on a super gun. Just fuck super guns, man. Get a cap. Just, I mean... Especially old games like our type here. They really were just designed for a curved monitor. Like, everything else I have is flat screen, which is nice, but... Just playing it on here is like, oh, it's just wonderful. Like, even the way, you know, the R-Type logo unfolds itself, it just looks so much cooler on a curved screen. As you can tell, they just designed it for this kind of setup. So I just could not be happier. As you can probably imagine, since it is pretty small, uh, doing two players on, you know, like, on a control panel, this side is a little cramped, but I'm honestly rarely going to do that. My main reason for even getting the two-player setup is on the rare occasions that I have two play a, a second player, but also because there are a lot of games that actually, like our type here, to get to navigate the test mode, you actually have to hit like player one button one and player two button one at the same time. So if you don't have the two-player control panel, you can't do that. Of course, the proper way on one of these old tables is to have one player on one side, the other player on the other side, because in table mode, the screen will actually flip itself automatically if you're in uh, a two-player alternating game like our type. But then it gets wider, and this is just what I need for now. Absolutely perfect. All right, so it's going to be really impossible to record and play this at the same time, but... <laughs> 100 yen coin. Of course, I do have a service button, you know, right down there, which lets me just jack in as many credits as I want to by hitting the button. But, proper way to do it, the coin. Hell yeah. So, let's see if we can play R type one handed. This is not gonna work. <laughs> Yeah, after just realizing just how wonderful the true, you know, 50k monitor really is, I could never ever go back. Seriously. I don't know what I'm, you know. I still like my super gun, but. You know, fuck J Rocks. Fuck encoders. Fuck everything. Real monitor or, or nothing. <laughs> ah! You can see I'm literally playing this with just my palm, and... <laughs> I don't even know how I actually managed to do this. Go for... <laughs> how far can I seriously get playing R-Type 1 handed? That was close. <laughs> ah. But, yeah, I'm just extremely happy right now, if you can't tell. <laughs> so, yeah. I live in a tiny Japanese apartment, and even I could find a cab that actually fits. So, I if I can do it, anyone can. 
totally worth it. So anyway. Well, I think the cat just speaks for itself. It's just there isn't a scratch on the top here whatsoever. Beautiful monitor. I don't even know what to say anymore, other than I'm just so psyched about having this thing. And dream come true right here. So, go out, get yourself a cab, and totally worth it. See you next time.